Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Summit Asia Lower Bracket Finals. The Summit, powered by Twitch, of course, is our first ever LAN tournament. I'm LD, he's Gods. It's time for Vici Gaming versus DT Winner as a date in the Grand Finals. Yeah, we're down to three teams. Vici Gaming, DT Club, Newbie waiting in the Grand Finals. I'm looking forward to it. It's exciting. We're down to three teams, one of which will be coming to LA in about a month time. We're actually, at, we're actually like one month away. Not, it, it, yeah, literally Damn. less than a month. Wow. Yeah, it's like 28 it's days from now, so clock's ticking. Before that, we'll have the TI4 qualifiers, but this is what I'm really excited for. And yeah. The big storyline is, can DT Club make it to their first international LAN? They've had good online results. They've done decently in some WPC matches, but... WPC's LAN. Yeah, but it's it's, a, it's a local LAN. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Their first international yeah. LAN. Yeah, no, I, I, no, I'm saying, yeah, I, wouldn't, I just wouldn't call that, like, online results, though. But yeah, I, I'd say uh, it's a local LAN, nothing like... Traveling to a big international line, nothing like a, a summit, dream hack, whatever mm -hmm. it may be, EMS, like some teams have been to. So we've got ourselves a best of three between Vici Gaming and Dreamtime. Uh, I, I don't know. Uh, Vici Gaming are on a roll after y yesterday coming back after losing game one to both IG and LGD. Took both be both bets of three. They had like a seven or eight hour day, but they're back today. One more best of three to go to get to that grand finals, and then another best of five before they make it to LA for the summit. But. Yeah, had a long day, had some time to rest, so we'll we'll see if they're ready. As for DT, yeah. they got slightly disappointed in the in the winter bracket finals, and well, they'll they'll maybe have a date with newbie should they get through Vici. It's gonna be a tough road for them, but guys. With that being said, the draft is underway. Game one has begun. Let's go ahead and hop on into it. All right. Yay! Yes. Custom draft is working. So Vici Gaming, uh, playing on that radiant side. DT Club on the dire. First bends onto Ez Brewmaster. It seems the Chinese teams have caught on. Well, not so much caught on. It's just like, well, if if that's going to be your your main go-to strat, and if you're going to start picking up in the first stage, we're going to start banning in the first stage. So, Vici Gaming first picked the AA. Uh, Nature's Prophet Rubik picked up, and then Centaur by Vici Gaming. So, what big here is something was been up. Ember Spirit's being ignored, but that's not too crazy mm. nowadays. Sand King. Sand yeah, King's Sand being King. ignored. That hero's normally been banned or, or picked in the first stage. Especially by Vici Gaming. And then they banned the Wisp, so no more Wisp Tiny for Dreamtime. Yeah, their Wisp Tiny was okay. It did not... It was not at the level of, like, say, what DK have been doing it at or Fnatic. Yeah. Um, didn't seem like they were as practiced or comfortable with the combo as, as other teams. It's a nice it's a nice strat to have in your arsenal, though, and just it changes the way you play the game. And Vici wanting them to play more of a straight-up game. Plus, yeah. West Profit as a combo. Very annoying. Yeah. Right, we'll see how... Uh, do you think, I think... Sh they didn't do, go any, like, full full straight-up games. I, I, I feel like Game 1 was a straight-up game. For them, they just happen to have a Brewmaster, which they're not going to have this time around. So, mm -hmm. I think they can just play more like they did Game 1 against Newbie, which just happened to be the game they won. The two games that he ran with Tiny, they lost both of. One which they felt like they really should have won. That Game 2, they had, a, like, a 15, 20k gold lead. Uh, but yeah, that game, it looked like they had it in the bag. Game 3, it just felt like they were too greedy, because they were also running a Farming Ember, you know, standard Battle Fury first, but just wasn't enough space on the map and time for those two to come online. We'll, we'll see what uh, the team's going to look to do here. So, uh, the Centaur pickup from Vici Gaming, uh, probably your offlaner. Could go 1v1 against Nature's Profit if you really want to go offensive trialing, but I think VG Gaming just going to look at this from a standard drafting convention's point of view and just aim to run a... a Silo safe lane carry of normal. Aggressive trialings have been very low percentage in uh, this tournament so yeah. far, I would say. So it's, it's an, it is an option, and they are dire side, so it's a slightly better offensive trialing, but uh, we'll see what they look to do here. Yeah. Dreamtime could always just run profit safe lane and run a jungler, run some roamers, and kind of dodge the lane if they want to. Yep. Um, eh, I don't know. We'll see. What, we'll see what D I'm actually looking forward to see DT Club play a more standard game because I think that's that's um, honestly I don't feel like they have to go for these wisp tight. It's not even really a gimmick. I can I can see why they feel like they have to do something. It was kind of like the E Home at TI2 where they didn't feel like they were as strong as all these teams, so they just had to keep doing wisp tiny and hope it worked. And then it kind of did. Like they beat some teams that E Home some of their players admit, hey, we didn't think we were stronger than them, but we beat them because of this wisp tiny thing. So. I think DC Club have to look at this from a point of view like, yeah, well, if you want to start competing with these top tier teams, you've got to play more, have, have the more standard drafts as well. Well, Luna's the choice now for Dreamtime, so they they still keep their laning options pretty flexible here. We've seen uh -huh. teams throw Luna even mid once in a while, though I don't expect it from Dreamtime. Uh, if they want to go for more of a pushing draft, Dragonite's out there. And Dragonite, Luna, Nature's Prophet is a very strong death ball in the mid game, but... Vici are pretty good at just initiating and countering that push. 
Yeah, it's kind of what the Lunar pick did open their draft up to that, so Vici Gaming do have to make sure. I think center AA alone isn't enough if DT picks something like a, a Chen DK. Yeah, you'll need more. Mm, what else is out there? I think Sand King's a great choice against that as well. Yeah, still in the pool, and Sand King AA is like one of the newbie love to run that support you. They'll like first to pick those heroes, so this may be the time to go for that, that Sand King for FY or Fenrir. Probably more FY, but we'll see who that would be. If Dreamtime want to p play a, a less push-oriented game, they could go for something like Ember, which is still available, but uh, it does feel a bit greedy. Ember, yeah. Luna, and then a Prophet as well. Um, I think Ember could almost be Vici Gaming if they want mm -hmm. it. It's still in the pool. Super's they... played a few games of Ember Spirit. It wasn't like anything spectacular. It wasn't anything disappointing. That, and it does, does fit in nicely as a mid-hero. There's a trend for Dreamtime, so... Expect here is a hero like DK to be banned out last, but even without a DK, I think even with a a puck type hero, I think DT can still do really well with uh, uh, just a mid game push. Just having the Lunar Prophet Chen alone is a long, a strong, strong push. Yeah, very strong pushing lineup. Sand King, Ancient Apparition Centaur is really good at counter pushing and halting that in its tracks. Though you've got the Ancient Apparition to negate a lot of these heals if Dreamtime try to group up and and mass AOE as well. So, I think Vici is pretty well equipped if Dreamtime do want to come four or five mana towers. Yeah, yeah. So, and I think Vici Gaming can just look also to do well on the lane stage. I guess Sanking again, like Sanking with Boots first can sort of set up some kills and ganks, but if they want to win the lane stage, they're going to need some, like, a strong mid as well as a, I don't know, Lifestealer is carry, although Lifestealer's been banned out. So, maybe the, the Silo Weaver makes an appearance, but. Again, Weaver, not the best against these five-man lives. They go for the Super Beastmaster, though. I like this. Yeah. G g has additional creep yeah. clearing ability and also a tanky frontliner. A hero that can slow pushes down, can initiate. We haven't seen Beastmaster much, but he also gives your carry a bit of an extra boost with the Inner Beast. Yeah. So, Chilling Touch, Inner Beast carry. That's a pretty scary duo. And when your opponents are going for that really fast kind of 50 minute push, one of the things, if you want to, like you talk about Centaur can just kind of engage and take the fight, well, you want to be able to keep your team alive, you need a fast mech buy, and that's kind of where Beastmaster can fit in nicely. Yeah, because so. Centaur will be getting a blink, and Ancient Apparition yeah. is not going to farm one, Sand King will get a blink as well, so I agree, I, I really like having a mech buyer here. Yeah. Morphling's the ban. Dreamtime perpetually seem worried about giving away hard carries to their team. We've seen, they are one of the few teams that will ban heroes like Anti Mage and Morphling uh, nearly every game. Yeah. Well, they're, well, maybe they're just they're not confident against like at um, getting out late games, and the Dragon Knight I mentioned does come out. And they have, don't have a lineup. I mean, I'm surprised. I guess they maybe weren't fully set on doing this all push lineup, or it's like maybe even to throw your opponents off. You ban anti mage, so you're. It's like why would you ban anti mage if you're going for a super fast push strat? So. The anti-mage ban leads to Vici Gaming ignoring the Luna the Chen, but <laughs> I don't know. Maybe some mind games, maybe just, like you say, maybe just a bit worried about their late game. Because the thing is, this is a lineup which, sure, they're built to push down all out of towers by like 20 minutes into the game, but... They have plenty of late games. Yeah, their late game's fantastic. they got three good core heroes, so... Um, I think maybe not the team fight of Vici Gaming, but still really good late game. Well, Five Man Dota will be the name of the game for Vici. They've snapped up a gyro, and... Can farm the stacks well, can gank well, but they they excel more than anything at, at the five man death ball, and the hexagons are are reflecting that. Yeah. I agree with these hexagons. I think they're pretty accurate overall. It's it's a scary five man, but it's one of those like if DT Club do start if their lamp is executed well and they get that like gold lead and get the mech before Beastmaster does, you still can't five man into that push with all those summons. Like the summons just tank everything in the front lines with the DK. Uh, and if the opponent, if Chen has Mech in Hand of God, like a cooldown plus Axis, that's not going to do enough damage. Not, an not alone. If you have a Blink Stampede, Epicenter, Burrow Strike, Ancient Apparition ult, that'll, yeah, yeah, that'll yeah, do yeah. the trick. But getting the, getting, having a Sanking, having a Blink is going to be the key thing there, and that's where you never know how much, how, how fast DT Club Slime's going to be pushing. If, they, if they're if they pushing down at T1s, like with the yeah, first that, DK they'll have to wait. They'll have to wait for their core items to fight this push. Yeah. For Vici Gaming to defend their core, and Center is, as, as an offlaner is not going to get that super fast blink, so... There's not going to be a super fast blink on Centaur, maybe the Sand King plays really greedy in the jungle, but... Uh, depending how fast DT Club start pushing, those blinks may not be up. Alright guys, it's time for Game 1, you're watching the Summit Asia, powered by Twitch, Vici Gaming vs. DT Club. Your loser bracket finals for the Asia region, loser goes home, winner will play a best of three against Newbie, or sorry, a best of five against Newbie tomorrow, and... That will determine who comes here to Los Angeles for our first ever LAN tournament, the Summit, closing in on $110,000.
in the prize pool, and that will unlock uh, the Pudge Wars All-Star Mid-Tournament. We've got more rewards listed. You can read all about them at summit.beyondthesummit.tv. Uh, just navigate through the site, and there is a page that describes the rewards in more detail. But, well, here we go. Vici on the Radiant side, DT on the Dire. On the Radiant side, we have ROTK going off lane as the Centaur. Super, your solo mid Beastmaster. Towards the safe lane goes Fenrir on the support Ancient Apparition. Silar, the Gyrocopter, and that will leave FY playing one of his best heroes, the Sand King. Well, for the die side, we've got Dreamtime or DT Club, one of the teams that are taking the Chinese scene by storm. In the top lane is going to be XDD playing the Farming Luna, the carry player for the team. Dreamy Yu on the support Rubik, Super playing the Chen. Solar mid will be Air on the Dragonite, the Brumas Extraordinaire. He's got a more than just a Brewmaster set of heroes, and we've got In July playing the offlane Nature's Prophet. Boots first for him, pretty standard stuff for the offlane Nature's Prophet. Yeah. No, DT Club uh, not getting their hands on the Brew, though. <laughs> That's fun to see. It's, it's Air's getting the respect he deserves. I, brew is not a first ban hero versus other teams, but after what Air's shown, yeah. why give it away? It just suits them well. They work around the Brewmaster well, and, and they draft around him well. But yeah. Dragonite can fill a similar niche, though not a little bit more carry, a little bit less team fight. Yeah, and we'll, we'll see what the plans can be for DT Club as far as how fast they look to push. DD Rune picked up early uh, for Dreamy U. He actually uses a telekinesis just to reset the creep of gloom up top, which is kind of funny and nice to see. The range you block that range group in front, and he uses the telekinesis just to make sure that range group doesn't die first on the the radiant side. So this lane will nah, not it's not going to push out at all. It's actually going to get pulled back. Yeah, nice denies from the Luna. So like you said, it will push in a bit. Still, once the DD rune wears off, Rubik, Luna, it's a decent duo to harass, but they won't be able to kill the Centaur until later on. Yeah, but it, the lane pushing out is just really scary, because you don't know when that Chen's coming into Genki. Normally Chen, you want to see in the jungle a bit more to level like 2, 3, then go for a smoke mid, but in theory you could just go for a straight up gank on the Centaur if the lane's really pushed out near the tower. Yeah, other lanes, the mid lane, not so easy to gank. Beastmaster, 5 armor, 660 HP. If he gets the right items... Uh, or the right creeps potentially could, but uh, early on he doesn't really have the burst damage to do it. If it's an Enchantress, there's more of a threat there, but in our bottom lane, very scary killing trio. If they get off a Burrow Strike, that's the only issue is it doesn't have long range, but once they get it off, he is toast. And looking at RTK's vision, Sentry Ward got dropped here, and they, he did get dewarded, so he's playing in the dark. Or sorry, uh, in July he's playing in the dark. Okay. Not art. I'm so used to yeah. seeing the Prophet and saying RTK. Yeah, no Dire Ward's up at the moment. Chen does have that single Observer Ward still available, though, so we'll probably pop down a Room Ward somewhere. Um, although, looking at looking at Super, uh, he's standing under an Observer Ward now, so they'll actually see any rotations coming from him. Yeah, he's got the Wildkin up, he'll clean up a Centaur, and no huge rush for Dreamtime to pressure. It's not like they need a First Blood. They're in fine shape, even if the Chen just farms, yeah. but... Uh, I, I think the big, the highest risk hero to die is this offlane profit. Yeah, I think for DT Club they're in better shape if Super just farms for a bit. Uh, first blood is obviously a lot of gold and a really a nice little edge. So maybe he goes for that a smoke later on, like when he gets a, when he gets maybe level five. If there's no first blood, he goes for a smoke. But getting your farm, getting the mech for the team ASAP to be pushing with is priority number one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, their their mid game is just so hard to deal with until they get the sand king blink. Yeah. And FY, has he been stacking the jungle yet? Not really. Nope. Mm. He's, he's just got a single now. stack here, but he's got golems. Yeah. He's, Not ideal. He's going for his first stack now, but Prophet has left the bottom lane, so he's going to go for uh, some jungle play. He'll TP bottom should the lane ever push out, and he needs to defend the tower by drawing the aggro with his treants. But for now, there's no signs of that push coming. Maybe with this first, first siege creep just spawning, uh, we'll see... Let's see that happen, but... It's not a very good pushing tri lane. They should probably just keep the lane back and farm. Like, Ancient Apparition, horrible at killing tower, same for Sand King, so... Yeah, it's kind of hard, like, if you, the problem is if you keep the lane static, it just means that Prophet can farm the jungle, and Chen can smoke somewhere, and Prophet can TP in the gank, without ever having to worry about defending bottom, so... That's true. I or think, you're giving them a bunch of experience. Yeah. I think not going for a push at all is, is sometimes a bit of a mistake. They go for a pull here from FY, and this, I think, is a single pull to, uh... Yeah, they're going for a single pull, and they're going to try push this bottom lane, at least... Force profit back, but in July is already TP because he knows this is such this is such a common thing. Like this three minutes thirty double creep wave push with the siege creep. FY just going to be stacking the big camp, so not joining them for that. In July, checking the bottom rune, and so far RTK doing very well in the off lane. Hits level three, actually out leveling the nature's prophet, who can catch up later. It's only a few creeps, but Sand King still not level three, so he needs one more level before start clearing these stacks. But 
Yeah, getting close and not being contested whatsoever. He may go for a, really farming the jungle. Yeah, I think he's going to try flank this T1 tower. This is this is like bread and butter. You see teams like DK. Any team does this constantly where they get the double creep wave to push. They'll send the supports to flank from behind. Even if they don't get kills, it's just to push Injolite out of this lane so they can get good damage done to the creep wave. Well, meanwhile, top lane, it is the first blood. The Lucent Beam 2 were used there in the chase and they'll brain down RTK. Luna with that nice initiating spell. Yep. Test of Faith was thrown out as well and they'll take an actual tower on the back yeah. of this. Whereas the Treants, well, maybe not going to draw the creep aggro back. Rocket Barrage warding them off. Okay. Well, DT Cobb going for that same double creep wave push here and uh, executing a little bit better by actually getting the first blood. Uh, and get, uh, looks guaranteed to get this tower, but Super's rotating in with a level 6, so... He does have a roar here. He can pick off someone on the backside, the Luna. Not level There's, 6 yet. Yeah. Nah, he gives up on it. Yeah, getting a kill there with three here, Fighting into three heroes was going to be a big risk. If they had Stampede or something, it would be fine, but it's only a level 3 centaur. Well, they bring out bottom to defend the tier 1. Well, DT Club defend their tower. And, and get the first blood, so good start for them. Yep. This is in deny range if they want to deny it. Yeah, uh, that's... Uh, gonna, I think Vici will contest this. Uh, try go in. Ooh. Oh, the Prophet's down. there with the deny. Air will take a Burrow Strike, but continues retreating out. There's no Cold Feet proc, and Air will make it out safely. He's got his ult. He could turn this one around, looking for FY. The Breathe Fire. No Ooh, mana for a stun. enough. That corrosive damage is not fatal, so one HP for FY. Yeah, just need a little more mana for Probably this Probably could have... Oh, like a TP would have been a bit suicidal. You end up in like, the enemy side of the map with that. Yeah, he has just boots as well. And then he just sandstorms, and then it's like, well, what do you do after that? If he sandstorms and you can't right-click. They can roar, and they'll do it top. They roared super, but where's that follow-up? Nice two heroes stunned by the telekinesis. Oh. Dreamy you. The first roar's been raced, wasted, and they lose the tower top. So super, wasting a bunch of time here. Uh, the Sand King denies himself to neutrals, gets that free teleport back to base, and... Now hits level 3, so time to start farming the big stack. Yeah, a uh, really good start for DT Club, though. Getting uh, getting tower, getting the deny at bottom, and getting the first blood. So this is pretty much all their early game objectives being accomplished. XDD. Let's have a Lucent Beam, but no Eclipse. They had a Test of Faith Lucent Beam, though. So if they get that Lucent Beam, that's a, clip, a kill, pretty much. Yeah. Here comes the push. Yeah. Can they defend the second tower? tower RTK just getting um, Tranquil Boots now. Roar. It looks like Still no. Pulling down. Yeah. No Ancient Apparition ult. Axes will go through, but they're just going for a deny here, and they're uh -oh. not going to get it. Super. He is pretty tanky with these yeah. phase boots up. With the Yeah, and six six armor as well. Like, CD didn't even have mana for a, a Lucent Beam. So two towers, though, and that's just gets Chen the faster mech, gets Prophet the faster Midas. I mean, he gets everyone their faster early game core items up for this. Really, They're just going to keep on pushing. I, I think they're going to try to take all these other towers by like 15, 20 minutes in, and when you're putting this much pressure on, FY's blink is not coming anytime soon. Uh, Centaur's blink is even further, so it's it's going to be a big gold lead in the early game for DT Club, just on, on the nature of their lineup. Yeah, and with trying to go for that early push for Vici, the Fenrir doesn't have his ult yet, so only level 4 in the Ancient Apparition. The Sand King, eh, getting his levels up, they could be looking to stack this camp firm with the Ancient Apparition. I imagine Fenrir might rotate there, but they need to prioritize getting Ice Blast as well, because that is, until yep. they have blinks, their best spell to stop these pushes. Yeah, uh, I, I guess maybe AA takes the mid lane and Beastmaster helps defend these pushes is probably your best bet, because you still need Gyro farming, and yeah. bottom lane's like the place to farm for him. It feels like a BKB mid, rush game. There's a roar mid on Dreamy U, the follow-up's there, and then a Burrow Strike comes through, but they're fighting into the Chen Creeps, that call down's here from Sylar, that's a perfect two hero call down counter initiate, that AOE damage, oh my. If this is, if this is like any other carry, they can't take that fight, yeah. but... That uh, gyro, the perfect hero for these early three, four, five hero engages. Yeah, I think people f kind of forget a bit uh, just how strong gyro is because here is like Luna's just considered to be so much better. But the one thing gyro has over Luna in so many ways is this early game fighting cooldown. Great team fight spell. It's got a short, like fifty second cooldown. It's just fantastic for these clashes. And it, it's funny, but the gyro is going to be the one buying the supports time to come online with that. Yeah. Now yeah. FY fourteen hundred gold blink probably by ten minutes. It's Super and Sila, the Gyro Beastmaster, who'll be defending the pushes and trying to create space for this for the Centaur and the Sand King to get blinks. They've got to go wherever the push goes from DT Club, and even just using a cooldown to stop pushes at this stage is going to be very useful. Yeah, even if he doesn't get a double kill and just stops the push, but hey, yeah. you throw a double kill on top of that, and Sylar's feeling good. As for D Dreamtime, still no mech. Super does have Buckler, Reign of Regen. Is there anything on the Courier? Uh, headdress recipe. So he's yeah. getting close to a mech. They'll have the mech before the Enchant Apparitional, or around the time out, most likely, and 
uh, profit working towards a Midas. They, they're getting some good items to help the push, but if they don't have BKBs on their cores, and there's a blink on Sand King, it gets a little dicey going in as five. They may be yeah. better off just farming and, and taking it more for like the 25 to 30 minute mark. Yeah, uh, that's the, the, ne the next double BKB timing is pretty good for them as well, but I don't know if the two towers they'll be satisfied with. Like, you've got a Chen who's not going to be as strong later on, but we'll see what the exact plan is. Maybe when they have mech, and they've got Hand of God now, so just the mech uh, 700 gold away, and then they will have uh, a pretty, like, that's going to get a lot of that cooldown damage. Well, they've got a Roar, they'll throw it out now, the Stomp, double edge, even the Hand of God used to try and stop this, but it won't be sufficient. Vici Gaming, come in numbers, and the Beastmaster Roar works its magic. Blink Dagger up for FY and 20 gold. That's a 10-minute that's a blink. Yeah. There and he go. was off to roaming a bit as well, not purely jungling. Yeah, that's the end of <laughs> end of the push early game push stream for for DT Club, or at least starting to get to that stage. No epicenter yet for Sanking, but he's got the four bar strike and will get epicenter when he hits level eight. Yeah, I, I think it, it's like you said, they just kind of forgot how good Gyro is at stopping the push. Obviously, they realize it, but they just weren't fully yeah. game planning for him to rotate and, and join that fight with such an early level of aggression. And it's just one fight as well. Normally, you look at these kind of early game push strats and there's some, some room for error. You miss a... You have a bad fight, even like two small small bad clashes, and you're still fine just because you get all this tower gold and you're ahead of your opponents. But with Vici Gaming, I feel like their line is one of those ones which you can't make mistakes against when you're going for a, a push strat. Dreamy, you smoked along with some buddies, Air and Super here as well. Looking for a pick off. The former pub star leading the charge. And uh, not going to okay. find anyone just yet. They'll try it. Maybe drop down an Observer Ward. The creeps will be the first ones revealed. Not in <laughs> Super. Just pops a haste and scurries out. Yeah. They haven't seen the Sand King blink yet, though. Jaru's bottom lane, but he's got he's already TPing. Oh, the they can't go for this. This is going to end very poorly, should yeah. they try. There's FY. No they didn't drop a ward when they came in either. There's a three hero burrow. He drops the impale, the sandstorm over the top, and that call down comes racing in. Super tanking that eclipse with ease. It's just puny damage in comparison. And now Vici are going to run XDD down. That will be four heroes dead. No escaping for him. Double edge completes the kill. And the team that's got the better team fight executing that, and now they'll be the ones taking towers. Yeah, I don't think they saw that that second blink. Fy with the he could have gone epi, but he's like, you know what? I don't need my epi here. Just make yeah. sure I get off the three hero burrow strike, and fight's over, folks. Yeah. Epi center. Like, if you he sees that three hero burrow strike opportunity, you maybe don't have that by the time you finish casting epi center. So actually, I don't. I think he got level eight off that fight. I don't think he had epi center. Okay. I think he was level 7. But even if he had it, it's like, I don't think he yeah. needed it. Regardless. No, I, I, <laughs> yeah, that, that fight shows I guess shows obviously results, he didn't yeah. need it, but... Maybe he would have gone for it if he had it, just because it's like your... Kind it's of more fun. Natu your natural play to epicenter into a fight like that, but... Yeah, the, the bar strikes... The, bar strikes more important than epicenter, at, especially at level 1, I'd say, majority of the time. I think it's a... Like a sanking mis misconception that you have to get... Ep like epicenter is like your really important early game spell. It's the bar strike. It's kind of like Earthshaker. Your ultimate's pretty... Yeah, pretty crappy. Even like even when you get that blink, it's not the unless the it's an salty. insanely huge creep army. Yeah, but if it's like a brood mother with like twenty plus spider lanes, teams or something. teams play around the fact that there's a like an earthshaker or a sanking with an ultimate. Like they're not going to group up, especially if it's an earthshaker with a blink. Um, or I mean, if, if earthshaker's not going to be able to walk in, they don't really play around the fact there's a blink bar strike or an, uh, a fissure. Like these you are the can't spells. really play around it. Yeah. These are the spells which are your reliable and more powerful teamfight spells in a lot of ways than your Echo Slam or right, Epicenter. I get once you hit level two is pretty nice, but and level one can be good, but it's just like a fight like that just goes to show Barrier Strike is kind of your your more important spell. Well, certainly with this draft, and now Fenrir's hit level six as well, so they have the Ancient Apparition ult for the next engagement. He has gone for uh, Max Cold Feet build, which is a little bit mm. unusual. I feel like if you want more damage, even Ice Vortex is a better choice because they have so many nukes and yeah. it is a nice chasing spell. You can always have one up, just constantly spamming it. But he had the Ice Vortex on that three hero Barrier Strike. Maybe yeah. it was like after Barrier Strike. But if that's a max Ice Vortex that follows, oh man, that Jeez. cooldown would have done. Yeah, the cooldown and Axes. It's Axes ridiculous is ridiculous damage. Axes is mixed, I think, magic and physical. Yeah, composite. Yeah, just mixed. There I don't know. <laughs> mixed. Yeah. Okay. Um, BKB is up for Silar now, so any ambitions of DT oh, five manning is they're done. They they'll need to just farm and and avoid fights. But the issue is going to be Vici's probably looking to five man in their own right. Go for a smoke gank with the double blinks now up the roar online stampede having cooldown. Yeah, their pickoff potential is just ridiculous. 
Yeah, and uh, I think DT are going to look at this and be like, oh crap. We had th they had this great early game start, but they'll have a mech for Chamber, even with the mech. Like, that's not going to out This is way fight. more damage than a mech. Yeah, uh, Ice Blast is online as well for AA, so that's going to negate a lot of that. And hey, ROTK has got his blink, so... Oh, may catch up profit bottom, no? Trying to sneak his way around the trees, the Hawk's giving them the initial scout. Sees that no one's... They may just be the ones pushing themselves, like, they've got such a good... Oh, they've boy. got the better five-man army now. Oh, they've almost found the profit. He does TP out in the nick of time. And he'll try and split push mid. But a rotation comes now from the gyrocopter, and... Yeah. They'll just settle for keeping the lanes out. They don't want to give away any free gold to DT because they know DT can't take towers in a straight up fight. So they'll just ensure that there isn't any sneaky split push coming either. Yeah, I think they're just defending them. Although top lane is a big creep wave, so more TP's back needed from Vici. It's kind of annoying. It seems like they want to fight and or... I, mean, I don't think they, they care too much about the T2 bottom tower. I think they just want to fight because they've got the gyro BKB and the double blink daggers, but... And all their ults are ready as well. Yeah. Like everything's ready for Vici to to take the fights now. Yeah, they can fight with four. They even without Jarocopter, they're actually pretty scary. But they don't want to take a full on four v five. Yeah, if they if they don't hit a nice two three hero burrow strike slash stomp, then the fight gets a little dicey. Yeah, and Super's getting really close to an Ag Scepter, and that's not only is the upgraded raw nice, but it just makes him like up to like fifteen six hundred HP. He becomes a super tank. Yeah, Beast Best are already with solid base armor as well. Seven armor. Um, hasn't bought anything to buff that up. The Hawk giving them a bit of vision here. D Dreamy you will zap it down. Yeah. So I think DT Club have to farm till they got the double BKBs, the Lunar Dragonite. It, like, you talked about like this 25 minute, maybe second timing, and that's probably what, what it's going to be. Maybe, hopefully it comes a bit before the 25 minute mark. It looks like Lunar will have it pretty soon. DK is a bit further off, but when they have the two BKBs, their push can come back online. Yeah, that's like round two where you get a kind of a, a fresh lease on life and beyond that they can take it late. They have a lot of carry potential, but they need a ton of farm if they want to take it late. They'll need a Luna with a Manta style, or maybe she even skips it with all this AoE and just goes straight into like butterfly satanic, but yeah. She'll need some big damage items. Dragonite will need to work towards an assault caress if they want to go past that, so Step one, get the BKBs. Step two, hopefully win a fight with them. Yeah, and I think even just going for a five-man push with BKBs is still really tricky because like a blink fire strike is an insta stun, and you can burst down heroes in the, before they pop their BKB. And there's an Ags roar, which yeah. is such long-range initiation oh, as well. Yeah, and you, and you can roar someone and then like from so far away that they don't get a BKB off. So, or just during their BKB, of course, is another option. But the problem is, you roar someone during BKB is you can't really kill them. You haven't got that much physical damage. Gyros, he's getting found, but. Not there yet. It looks like Vici are just going to start the push without the full complement of heroes. They've had to keep these lanes out. The Prophet proving a bit of a nuisance, but Siler's in the front lines. And for DT, there is no great instant stun. You can lose some beam. Maybe if Dragonite has a haste and you go, but oh no. Homie missiles hit XTD. Now he's going to get caught by a roar. The follow-up's there from the gyro. Wow. They have stolen the call down. No, the rocket barrage, but... Oh, Dreamy, you will pay for this one. The Flax burning him down. He'll fall to Silar. Mega kill streak. 5-0 and 3. Only 17 <laughs> minutes in. They stampeded in off of a level 1 homing missile. Like, the homing missile hits and like, let's go guys, homing missile just hit. And it's still a 2 second stun, even yeah. a level 1. That's, I mean, that's where it's a pretty good 1 point value point. Chen went for the insta send back. Oh, Sanking, it's a solo kill. With solo the epi on yeah. the profit. Even with Chen going for the send back, it's just level 2 test of fates, so it was quite a long send back. The 5 second delay, I could not save the Lunar at top. DT can't defend towers, really. Their counter push is pretty weak. Their push is strong, but... They don't have much safe AoE to clear waves. Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure what they can do at this point. They're down 11 kills to 4. It's only a small gold lead for Vici Gaming, but... And losing the Luna there, she doesn't have BKB yet. Yeah. She was so close. That's a costly death. That's going to mean a tier 2 probably as well. Ags Roar's online, Calldown's online. Vici Gaming, they're always ready to fight. Look yeah. at these heroes, nobody's got a long duration cooldown. Yeah. Ice Pass being thrown bottom lane, they make it for killing air here. Uh, with the Blink Burrow Strike, this could definitely work out. FY's in position, and that's a dead Dragon Knight. One more right click should be enough, and yeah. down he goes. Nice play Prophet there. Prophet did snipe a tower, though. Yeah, uh, yeah he back towards the tier 1 bottom. Yeah. That's, I guess, that's only their third or fourth tower of the game, but like, considering how fast they got the top two towers, like pushing only the tier 1s now, seems very, very late. For it, it is late. I like it, though, because they need some income here. They're not getting easy farm off the map otherwise, and... Well, the Ancients aren't very safe with this Observer Ward, so... That does get Luna her BKB. Dragon Knight bought his recipe before dying. 
Yeah. But still needs a Mithril Hammer. And even once they get them, by that point, Jaro probably will have his next damage item. Silar's up to 1,500 gold, so... Yeah, the big problem right now, I think, for DT is they're just so under-leveled. They've been 5 manning most of the game and losing all these team fights. You look at these hero levels, and DT are... They've, their DK and Profit are below level 10. You look at the Radiant Vici Gaming, they've got a level 14 Gyrocopter, and even the, the Sand King's level 11, the Beastmaster's level 11. Only Luna on the die side is higher than level 10. Yeah. <laughs> Sand King Epi is doing a lot of work, and your Dragon Knight, you want to have that level 3 Frost Dragon in the mid-game team fights? Not happening at this rate. Yeah. Getting, just getting that level 2 uh, Fire Dragon is going to be tricky. <laughs> well, D-Ward near the Roche Pit, Vici Gaming now rotating back onto the lane, and Looking to go. They've got four heroes grouped up. Joining the charge will be FY, and it's just so easy for them to initiate. You want a Stampede yeah. Roar, you've got that option. You can Blink Stomp, you can Blink Burrow, you can Epicenter Blink Burrow. They have a million and one ways to fight, and that's why we see DT. They're like, this is a relatively safe zone, but even that is... Potentially Centaur pops his ult and gets in range first. And it's still a 10 second uh, Silo BKB. Like, he's had this for some time, but he hasn't had to use it. DT Club just can't engage, so Silo's got a full 10 second BKB, so this Eclipse... No chance of doing too much. DK stuns, like, and, and you just can't initiate. Like, this BKB Jaro is just king right now, and wait till he gets an MKB or Butterfly, whatever his next damage item's gonna be. Yeah. A butterfly wouldn't be bad. A Butterfly or MKB is a, yeah. a fine choice. There's a lot of right click on DT, but. It's, it's, it's like one of those just buy, insert damage item here, and you become scary. Like, yeah. Whichever one of those two it is. Yeah, I don't see DT actually right-clicking, to be honest, so I think you can just go pure damage here with how superior VG Gaming's team yeah. fight is right now. And they're gonna find Dreamy U, it looks like. Oh, blink, stomp, double edge, and bro, oh. complete the kill. Raw and AA Ice Blast, LD. God, just for use everything. Oh, they stampede for the courier, they're not gonna get it! Eh, why the hell not? Give it a shot. Uh, Could've blinked high ground and attempted that, but that is a, a bit risky. Think not, nothing's too though. risky for R2K. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> No, he's playing a very disciplined game this time yeah. around. This is this is nice from DT. Sneak into Roche. It'll be a pretty slow Roche, and uh, it kind of depends if Vici Gaming scattered out or not. And they get the Hawk up, so... Uh-oh. Oh, boy. This is not going to work. They know there's no raw AA Ice Blast, but you still cannot fight. Now, if there's one... If there's, like, one AoE stun up, and it hits two, yeah. three heroes, the fight's already over. Like, Sanking Centaur alone is going to be enough to defend any push. So the only things that Vici are missing to go high ground are probably that one damage item on Gyro and a pipe. But they'll find Super outside the base as well. Dreamy Yu does manage to steal level 4 Burrow. This could be a nice spell to try and slow down the push, but how's he going to get in range for that Burrow strike? Oh, they don't have anyone else to go at first. Yeah. No Dragon Knight BKB just yet. And if he walks into Burrow, he is going to get roared or Burrow striked in his own right. It is... We'll have to almost counter initiate here with that. Yeah. Silo just solo pushes the tier two top, and well, there's only one tier two bottom remaining. They may not, not even care about that. They can take Roche. They can. I don't think they haven't got the really best high ground push lineup yet. Gerald just TP bottom. Like he's an item short of the high ground push. Not to mention an age is short. They should get the pipe as well. They're yeah. very close to it, and it will be helpful against Eclipse. Yeah. There we go. They've got. There's your pipe. So I think just the gyro damage item. That's all yeah. they really need to go. May as well take like the Aegis just for that insurance policy. Yeah, DT, what's DT gonna do? They they can't steal the Aegis well. Yep. Their split push isn't that fast. Mm, and XDD, TNT. he'll get caught here. RTK can just jump in, he's got a pipe. And the BKB gets forced out, roar, but it's cancelled. Yeah. It's cancelled by the roar, and now XDD has nothing to do but die. No BKB, that's his 10 second BKB charge, he just bought it. He buys the Yasha components before going down. Does spend his gold, but... That's Vici Gaming. Free Roche, free push, whatever they want. Yeah, they'll take this T2 bottom and then maybe go Roche. We'll see. What's Jarrow bought? He's bought double MKB. Javelins. Yeah, MKB coming out. He's almost got it. After this tower, he'll have it and you take Roche, you go you go high ground. Yeah. How did DT stop it? It's mm, so it's such an easy execute They're losing to Profit top fight. to another, another Epicenter solo kills Profit, so I... <sighs> Jeez. That's a scary thing. Like they just push us four, and like Prophet's like, oh, it's safe to go push out a lane because there's four heroes pushing this lane. But just a solo Sand King can take him out, and oh. that's something Fy's done really well. Burrow strikes in there. Are they gonna steal anything? Test of Faith follow up. They'll lift him as well. They might kill off Fy. Goes in Viz. Is there detection? No, there's not. The Burrow strikes cooling down though. Fy can blink out. He can almost go. Oh, I thought he'd go for a kill. I guess there was another Burrow strike he had to worry about. Ooh. Meanwhile, mid Beastmaster just casually roaring Chen Crazy. It gets caught by the Burrow, yeah. but he can still go in Viz. I don't know if Rubik actually saw him. Oh, he sees the sandstorm now. Yeah, now he definitely Wrong knows. Wrong way, blink up. Oh, oh he's dead. Yeah. Finally goes down. He played that not, not perfectly, but... Yeah. 
Definitely not perfect. He could have blinked up like even higher or bar he had a bar he bar strike into the shop where they were waiting, but meh. Yeah, Rubik doesn't have a blink dagger. Not so the end of the world. He could have hit a bit better. Such a such a small thing, but hey. Still, Jaro has MKB. Yeah. Um honestly, I think VG Gaming just should take Roche now and, and try and go push. Yeah. There's no reason to wait too long and maybe Luna Dragonite get their BKBs and start making a damage item. Yeah. You're so strong right now in f as five. Just wait for the sand cane and go. I like that idea. And for DT, I think they maybe want to, yeah, let's say Smoke's probably a good idea here so they can try find pickoffs before the, the five man Roche slash push comes. They didn't they need want to try and engage before Sankings back, although that's going to mean engaging right now. There's no tier ones up for VG Gaming, which does mean Sankings going to take a while to get back to the fights. Oh, feature already coming. They have a double damage rune on Gyro. I don't think they need Sankin for this. Okay. Maybe a Dragon Tail to start it off, though, could put him in a bit of trouble. H. Apparition Ult comes in, then the call down. That's going to connect on two. That's a lot of damage already, but Silar didn't get off his BKB. Yeah. He'll just get burst down by the chain stun. Oh, he's just a bit late to pop it, and now he'll buy back. A bit of a misplay there. Silar just need to use it ASAP, because the, the DK just walked up to him and stunned. It wasn't anything... It didn't catch him. And they him. had vision. They had H. Apparition Ult coming in over the top, yeah. and, and there were no surprises when there. You see that DK in range, you just got to BKB before he stuns you. Look how much health these things have. Double edge to the face. Aldi brings it down half. That's right. It gives, Freaking what, 200 XP now? 200 gold, 200 XP, yeah. yeah. Stop that. It's value. Well, they'll still get the Aegis. It's, it's been a slightly sloppy two, three minutes for VG. But end of the day, they're going to get Aegis. They can walk high ground with their BKB having cooldown for Silar and Or, uh, have, or being available since he didn't use it. And yeah. All ult should be ready very soon, too. Just waiting for Stampede. Yeah. Uh, I think this is your... Maybe straight down mid, we'll see which lane they, they try and push If out. they want to play it ultra safe, they could wait until he's satanic. That is the only other thing I can think of, but I don't really think he needs it. Yeah. They can, yeah, wait till they have the satanic and maybe just focus on getting map control, dewarding the map, ganking anyone who pushes out, like these couple of uh, DT heroes up top, but uh, it seems they are going to maybe back off for a Actually, that's DT Club TP the hell out of there. Now, DT are just going to look to to stall. Profit will split push, DK Luna will try and split push. They're not really the best draft for this, but they, they do not want to fight head on. Not against this Aegis. Yeah, and uh, Sila gets spotted top, so... DT Club know they're safe for now. The Aegis still... Like, or like... are they? FY's on the move again. He's yeah. looking for another pick off. Hmm. He'll find a bottom, perhaps. Not XTD, does a BKB, but... He can just bait out this BKB maybe and go into Sandstorm and uh huh. Now RTK comes in. The BKB is popped. Now RTK forced to beat a retreat. He does have a pipe available. Might need to pop it here. Out comes the stun. He's actually going to connect on in July right as the TP rise. Great timing by RTK. The pipe has been used. Blink of the trees is FY. Perhaps getting ready for that epicenter. They've drawn five heroes bottom from DT. but Luna BKB, but. Yeah. Small, small victories, I guess, for VG Gaming. Just make that BKB for Luna just. Get shorter and shorter. Yeah, definitely not a big victory. But BKB charges are very important for Luna, though. Vici yeah. have insane nuke damage. This is not a game where you want to be having a four or five second BKB, and we're already down to seven. Oh wow! Yeah, two of these have been used for escapes. Yeah, that is a bit problematic. Looks like they might make the move now. Three heroes grouped up mid. The only hero not here is Fy, but can blink and head directly towards the engagement. Hmm. Trying to find a pick off first, it looks like. Yeah, it's, they're not finding too much, even with the Hawk on their side. And maybe now XDD at top. Four staff in, that's going to set up a roar. The name champion ult comes clipping through over the top. It connects on XDD. The BKB is cooling down. He doesn't have it for this engagement. Now he's fallen, they'll get dewarded. And Vici Gaming, in game one of this best of three, have just looked absolutely surgical. Leading 18 to 6. They trailed a tiny bit at the beginning, but it's just been all Vici all the way ever since the five minute mark. Dreamy you will manage to steal Call of the Wild, but not really ideal. You want that roar. You want a big AoE spell to try and stop this push. Yeah, and you only get the boar now. You don't get the Hawk as well, so... Oh, that's right, because it's two separate spells. Yeah. It's a, a Rubik nerf with the Beastmaster changes. Oh, Fichi not trying to do anything too sneaky. Maybe they could have gotten vision of FY Sand King here. Oh. I'll keep chipping away. No pipe used just yet from RTK. I think he maybe wants to... Oh, there we go. And then the roar. On to air. The stomp follow-up. The send back doesn't even matter. FY takes this opportunity to eviscerate the Rubik, and it looks to be the end for DT. Their first lane of Rax will fall. They are trading top lane, okay. taking on a tier 3, but they will lose a Rax for this. And it looks like Vici will defend, but 
That's about as good as you're going to get for yeah. in, from in July. That's nice. They're still pressing the melee racks here. They've got the Necro 3s. Where's the follow-up? Nobody else able to TP out. The Aegis has been forced out. DT hanging on, finding their inner rat, and they'll take down the racks. No Mon on FY to stop this. Still engaging mid. No BKB on Silar. XDD, Poppy, Azoni. Already used the Eclipse. Roar. Coy down in 8 seconds. Nice stomp from RTK. Buying them time. They have an HF for Shield in 1. DT. Do manage to take a melee Rex for a melee Rex? Man, that is way better than what they should have expected. Admiral Bulldog would be proud of that one. Some TPs must have gotten cancelled there. Roar on XDD. Now the HF Bristol comes in, but this could cost them. Two hero called out. Two hero roar. No BKB on air. And the nuke damage once these BKBs ends is just overwhelming. Well, can they do anything off of this? Do they get anything besides a range Rex? Bottom. Um, I don't... I think that's kind of tricky, but without a creep wave. Dragonite bought back. Okay, He's dead go. for 30. Oh, that's true. Yeah, with the no buybacks, uh, Luna does have buyback, but if they see Luna buyback, they can just back off. Yeah, no Eclipse, no BKB even, yeah. but why Why risk it? Yeah. So, Dreamtime, hold on. They do get a Rax, but they're pretty poor. No yeah. item progression really for XDD, whereas the Gyrocopter is up to 4,500 gold, so Silar has Satanic. Well. It's still alive is, is the big thing here. If they just lo lost Raxes and kept taking no... They're getting trades. Every time uh, Vici come at them, they get some kind of a trade, apart from like the few like Luna pickups, which just seem to... The dream is not dead, Guts. <sighs> it's game one. It's a best of three, this lose bracket final. So, Regardless of result, I, I, I believe there's at least some hope for dream time, but... Agreed. Vici Gaming are just the the more consistent team, the the team with I think just a, more versatility in general. I think showing it here with this, like picking up a, a gyrocopter, not a hero we see much in the current meta. It's just really good against push strats, yeah. and especially when you have good initiators, which they definitely have in Centaur Sand King. And you do go back to the one failed push before the blink came online, where Silar just rotated in, got a three hero call down. That was just a good rotation from him, and Dreamtime were not prepared for it. And once that happened, they got the blink, and a lot of yep. Dreamtime strategy, the wheels just came off of it. I think VG Gaming will take that, that Rax loss, though, as a wake-up call. Like, okay, this game's not as in the bag, as much in the bag as we thought, so... They'll make sure they have, have DPs ready, have all lanes pushed out when they go for a push, and probably going to wait for the next rotation again. It's still three, four minutes away, but... Yeah, it's one thing to trade one Rax for one Rax, but you, don't, you do not want to be 2-2. Two, two. Against the Prophet. Yeah. Wow, Super's going refresher, it looks like. He's picked up an Oblivion Staff on Beastmaster. Hmm. Could Any be reason to get an Orchid? Not no, really. Like, refresher? Oh. Your ulti's got such a short cooldown, but at the same time, like, the fights are over before you can use a second one often. Well, lifts up on FY. Will be tossed back towards the Dragonite mid. Then he gets hexed. What's he doing and there? FY will be caught, and he gives a Burrow Strike away to Dreamy yeah. U. Great, great find from Dreamtime, but... Like you said, what was he doing? Meanwhile, there? Luna being chased by Beastmaster. Central gets topped, and now he'll run through. Gets that slow off as well. H. Personal coming in. It connects. Oh. He does have a TP, but I think he's going to shatter here anyway. A few more right clicks will bring him down. He's not in shatter range just yet. There you go. I get the kill in the end. That was nice. Super waited to uh, the ice blast before he used that roar. Now, now they lost Dreamy U as well. That's the burrow strike gone. He just came in too late. Wanted yeah. to save the Luna, but couldn't do it. Made sure the ice blast was going to hit because he needed the ice blast damage to kill Luna. So, well, now it's it's, the, it's where BKBs are nice on paper against Vici, but they have so much instant initiation. Roar, Blink yeah. Burrow. It's very hard not to get to to get the BKBs off at the right time. Yeah. Prophet's being so annoying here at bottom lane. He's actually got going to do some damage to the tier three. Gyro has no TP back. This tier three. Tower. They're just saying, screw it, man. Let's go for the kills. Yeah, they got the ward on the high ground in the enemy base. So, Roar, Ice Blast. Why not? Tyler, you pay, you play base defense. We'll we'll go for fun. Yeah. Even a heart on Centaur. If Vici ever get a straight up fight, there's no way Dreamtime's winning that. But uh, with this profit being a nuisance, maybe you find some pickoffs. They're not going to fight on equal footing this game. That's what it definitely feels like. No, it, it feels uh, feels like they'll have to be cheeky. Sankin goes Shadow Blade. That's cheeky. And Vici Gaming can have have a bit of cheek of their own. Well, Centaur Stomp comes in mid, the double edge follow-ups there onto Injulai. Ancient Apparition ult does connect, forcing him back, now the BKB from air, but already the Prophet's fallen. Does he have a buyback? He does. Now the Roar. Oh, no. Air won't be able to get out of this one. There's a the send back, the Roar was stolen. Ah, does get Dreamy, out of you time. may die though. Blink of Stomp? Yeah. Oh, oh he gets nice. the Roar off, but a two heal burrow. Now over the top will come the Epicenter. The slow on XDD, but does pop his BKB, negating the damage. Roar TK. Just diving the tier 4 towers. They're fully committed to this one. 
Do they keep on going for kills? Yes, they do. BKBs are down. Two hero Burrow. FY jumps past the Luna. Then Burrow's back onto the Dragonite. Nicely executed by him. And he gets a little vengeance here. <laughs> RTK zoning people into the fountain. <laughs> Angelai does take the Rage Rex top. But mm -hmm. not as big of a victory as taking a melee there. Yeah. And now will, will Vici get a trade? Do they actually get Rex? I think he wanted to, wants to like t go for the bottom Rexes. They just keep on wanting to go for kills. Pro oh. Yeah, Prophet's going bottom Rexes. This is what he needs to do. Necro 3, get some more Treants. Like, Vici need to go throne or bottom Rax here, like they, or defend, like they can't let this proper get another it. set of Raxes. I think they can just throw it. With these yeah. low cooldown ultimates, dead. they can keep on sniping heroes and RTK oh, yeah. finds the two hero stop. Super is dead at the fountain and it's been a nice run from the Prophet, but can he actually kill the throne in time? He's, he's, he's Prophet's not to. getting thrown, he's going Raxes here. They've got to hold the throne using whoever's alive. Well, that's, that's game then, because there's no buybacks here. Yeah, Prophet's never going to win a throne race, unfortunately. Yeah, he's... He's decided to come back and try and defend. Healing up in the fountain, but it's too late. Vici gave me a slightly sloppy conclusion to game one, but a win's a win. He'll buy a Mask of Madness, and in July will come in. Goes for the right clicks, dodges the stun. He's baiting out some initiation here. <laughs> dodges but, everything! But the virus strike. Yeah, he's got the moves like Jagger, but he's also going to die anyway. There we go. GG is called. Well played by the Prof. I, guess. I, I think he could have gone for the bottom Raxes instead of the top range Rax, and then helped his team out to defend there, but... He was the only reason they were still in that game. So, like, you can say, oh, I could have done that little thing better. But realistically, he, the Luna, the DK, just kept on dying, getting roared, getting AA ice blasted. and It's so know. hard not to get caught against that draft from Vici. Like, yeah. you, if either you're standing so far back, you're not defending, or you're in range to get caught by something. And they yeah. even had things like Force Staff Roar, Stampede Roar. Uh, it, was, it was hard to stay alive. It was uh, yeah, a tough game to be any of the any of the DT. Any of the heroes, heroes. really? <laughs> yeah, DT. Except for the Prophet, because he was enjoying. Yeah, the Prophet fight. just ignored. He's one, four, and two at the end. There did some good split push. I, I think Prophet did like a really good game, and I think DT Club just their strategy overall. It was solid. Just they like the the bad fight made you talked about a few times. It just it really set them back. Yeah, their lineup could not afford to lose a fight like that because once Vici got blinks and their core team fight items, the ability to five man was over. Yep. Yeah, yep. Yeah. I agree. Well, with that being said, that's game one of a best of three, guys. You're watching the Summit Asia, powered by Twitch. If you haven't bought a compendium yet, you should do so. We still have European playoffs action. Uh, we don't have continue. compendium, yeah. Not compendium, yeah. bundle. Ticket bundle. Since when do we have compendiums, Aldi? This yes. is news to me. Not a compendium, but if you want the ticket bundle with the axe set as well as uh, the load screen and also contribute yeah. towards the prize pool, you can help uh, help us hit our stretch goals. Our next stretch goal, we're very close to it, is Pudge Wars. As soon as $30,000 is raised by the community, that will be unlocked and... Uh, it should be a fun all-star match. DK, Navi, and one of these three teams will be coming. Either oh, DT, wow. Vici, or Newbie. We're only 1,000 away from the, the Pudge Wars. All so. right. Next next on the list is the inflatable pool. Okay. So if you want to see uh, Puppy cooling off in the backyard pool at the studio, then definitely something to consider. But guys, either way, thanks for joining us. Game 2 is coming up next. Vici Gaming versus DT will continue after this.